Hello Immortal News family and welcome to another video from our channel. In today's video we'll be sharing a list of well-known celebrities who have recently passed away, with their announcements made public today, September 15th. Additionally, we have some heartfelt tributes to honor their memories. Later in the video, we will also discuss the recent news surrounding supermodel Bianca Balti, with the utmost care and sensitivity. So, stay tuned, and before we begin, please show your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you. Number 10. Emily Gold, a vibrant talent and beloved member of the Los Osos High School dance team, captivated the nation with her performance on America's Got Talent. Born on April 8, 2007, in Rancho Cucamonga, California, Emily's passion for dance and her dynamic presence on stage left a lasting impression on all who witnessed her talent. From an early age, Emily was deeply involved in dance showcasing her skills in school performances and eventually on national television. Her spirited routines on America's Got Talent earned her and her team accolades, including a memorable standing ovation from Judge Simon Cowell, who lauded the group for embodying the spirit of youth and talent. Emily's dedication to her craft was evident as she balanced her rigorous school commitments with the demands of her dance performances. Tragically, Emily passed away at the age of 17, her loss has deeply affected her community, family, and fans, who remember her not only for her achievements but also for her vibrant spirit and the joy she brought to her performances. Emily's legacy continues to inspire young dancers and her story is a poignant reminder of the impact one young person can have on the world through art and passion. Tributes to Emily Gold Number 9. Gabriel the Gun Gonzalez, renowned for his vibrant trumpet melodies and foundational role in the influential ska band No Doubt, left an everlasting mark on the music scene. Born on July 11, 1967, in Hermosa Beach, California, Gonzalez's musical journey began in his high school band, setting the stage for a career that would be celebrated worldwide. In the 1980s, Gonzalez became an integral part of No Doubt, co-writing hits such as Total Hate 95, and Paulina. His contributions helped shape the band's sound during its formative years, blending ska with an infectious pop sensibility. Gonzalez's knack for composition and performance breathed life into the Southern California music scene and beyond, influencing a new generation of musicians. Beyond no doubt, Gonzalez's talent spanned several other bands, including Save Ferris and The Untouchables, showcasing his versatility and passion for ska and rock. His presence was a bridge across various musical landscapes, bringing a unique blend of enthusiasm and expertise to each project. Offstage, Gabriel was deeply committed to his Cuban-American roots and valued education, attending the prestigious Berklee College of Music. His cultural and musical heritage influenced not only his style, but also his approach to life and art, making him a beloved figure among peers and fans alike. Tragically, Gabriel Gonzalez passed away following a motorcycle accident in Hermosa Beach, California, at the age of 57. His sudden departure was mourned by the music community and his family, leaving behind three children who remember him not only as a musical pioneer, but also as a loving father. Gonzalez's legacy in the ska and music communities continues to resonate, reminding us of his dynamic contributions to a genre that thrives on energy and authenticity. His music and the memories he created will forever be cherished by those who were touched by his life and work. Tributes to Gabriel Gonzalez. Number 8. Tito Jackson a pivotal figure in the world of pop music leaves behind a legacy marked by his innovation and charisma as an original member of the Jackson 5. Born Toriano Adaril Jackson on October 15, 1953, in Gary, Indiana, Tito was the third of Catherine and Joe Jackson's ten children. His journey in music began under his father's management, with early performances alongside his brothers Jermaine and Jackie and the Jackson brothers before the formation of the iconic Jackson 5 in 1966. 
The Jackson 5 with Tito on guitar captivated audiences with their energetic performances and chart-topping hits like I Want You Back and ABC. Their success not only made them Motown's premier act, but also set a new standard for boy bands and young musical groups. Tito's role extended beyond performances. His guitar work, although not featured on the early records, was an integral part of their live shows and later recordings. After leaving Motown in 1975, Tito and his brothers signed with Epic Records as the Jacksons, bringing a new sound and independence to their music. Albums like Destiny and Triumph showcased their evolution with hits such as Blame It on the Boogie and Can You Feel It, reflecting Tito's growing influence in the band's creative process. Tito's personal life, much like his professional career, was filled with both challenges and accomplishments. He was a father to three sons, Taj, Harold, and TJ, who would go on to form the music group 3T. Tito not only managed 3T but also fostered their careers with the same dedication he devoted to his own. Tito Jackson passed away at the age of 70 while traveling from New Mexico to Oklahoma. His death marks the end of an era but also celebrates a life that greatly influenced the landscape of pop music. Tito's impact extends beyond his family and his music. It resonates in the hearts of those who grew up with his melodies and in the industry that will forever bear his imprint. Tributes to Tito Jackson Number 7. Selo Motlong, a cherished figure in South African entertainment, left an enduring legacy through his compelling performances as an actor, presenter, and MC. Born on November 4, 1969 in South Africa, Motlong's career spanned various facets of the performing arts, deeply enriching the television and theater landscapes with his talent. Motlong's notable contributions to television began to gain recognition with his award-nominated performance in Cheek in Business in 1998. He became a familiar face through roles in significant series like Soul City, The Lab, and Josie H., displaying a versatile acting range that resonated with both critics and audiences. His portrayal of complex characters in Backstage and later in Mamello and Ring of Lies showcased his profound ability to connect with viewers earning him a place in the hearts of many. Beyond television, Mutlung's dedication to theater was evident in his performances in plays like The Good Woman of Sharkville and Coldstone Jug. His stage work, often blending dramatic depth with cultural resonance, highlighted his commitment to storytelling and his skill in bringing diverse characters to life. Cello's impact extended beyond his roles through his mentorship of aspiring actors and his contributions to community arts programs reflecting his belief in using art to inspire and make a difference. His work in productions aimed at social change, such as The Estate, further underscored his commitment to impactful storytelling. Selo Mutlaung passed away at the age of 54, leaving behind a legacy of artistic excellence and community engagement that transformed the South African art scene. His body of work continues to inspire and influence, ensuring his contributions to the arts will be remembered and celebrated. Tributes to Selo Mutlaung. Number 6. Gary Shaw, born on January 21, 1961 in Birmingham, England, was a celebrated football striker whose talent and achievements left an everlasting mark on the sport. Shaw's illustrious career was most prominently defined by his time with Aston Villa during the early 1980s, where his skillful play was pivotal in the club's domestic and European successes. Shaw helped Aston Villa clinch the First Division Championship in the 1981 season and followed up with a victory in the European Cup the next year. Notably, he was the only Birmingham-born player on the team during these triumphs. His exceptional performances during this period earned him the PFA Young Player of the Year Award in 1981 and the Bravo Award in 1982, recognizing him as the best under-23 player in European competitions. His career, however, faced challenges when a knee injury in 1983 during a game against Nottingham Forest 
curtailed his promising trajectory. Despite this setback, Shaw continued to play for Aston Villa until 1988 and later played for clubs across Europe and in Hong Kong before retiring. Shaw's legacy transcends his contributions on the field. He was a revered figure in the football community, known for his humility and sportsmanship. He ventured into coaching, imparting his knowledge and passion for the game to younger generations. Gary Shaw passed away at the age of 63 after a tragic accident. His death was mourned across the football world, with tributes pouring in from former teammates, fans, and clubs, underscoring the profound impact he had on the sport and the lives of those he touched. Shaw's legacy will continue to inspire aspiring footballers and the broader sports community. His journey from a local Birmingham talent to a European football icon embodies the spirit of determination and excellence. Tributes to Gary Shaw. Number 5. Robert Lansdorp, an emblematic figure in the tennis coaching world, profoundly influenced the careers of several top-ranked tennis players. Born on November 12, 1938, in the Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia, Lansdorp settled in California, where he became a pivotal force in tennis coaching. Lansdorp's coaching philosophy, which centered on perfecting ground strokes, particularly the forehand, earned him the nickname, the architect of the Lansdorp forehand. His technique emphasized power and precision, shaping the playing styles of tennis legends such as Tracy Austin, Pete Sampras, Lindsay Davenport, and Maria Sharapova. Each of these players not only excelled on the international stage but also carried forward his legacy through their iconic performances. In 1979, his coaching acumen was spotlighted when his protege, Tracy Austin, won the US Open women's singles title at just 16, becoming the youngest champion in history. This victory was a testament to Lansdorp's ability to cultivate young talent, a trait that continued throughout his career as he worked with other tennis greats. Beyond the court, Lansdorp's contributions were recognized with numerous accolades, including the USTA Lifetime Achievement Award in 2005 and an honor at the inaugural 2013 Team USA Coaching Legend Reception in Indian Wells, California. These awards celebrated his enduring impact on American tennis, emphasizing his role in shaping not just players but the very fabric of the sport. Robert Lansdorp passed away at the age of 85. His death marks the end of an era for tennis coaching, but his teachings and techniques continue to influence the sport. Lansdorp was more than just a coach. He was a visionary who saw potential where others saw limits. As the tennis community remembers him, the echo of his influence resonates beyond the players he coached to the many he inspired. His legacy of innovation and excellence in tennis coaching will undoubtedly endure, proving that his impact on the sport is both transformative and everlasting. Tributes to Robert Lansdorp. Number 4. Otis Davis, an American track and field icon, left an everlasting mark on the world of athletics with his historic performances in the 400m and 4x400m relay at the 1960 Summer Olympics in Rome. Born on July 12, 1932, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Davis not only showcased extraordinary athletic prowess, but also broke racial and age barriers in a sport dominated by younger athletes. Davis's journey into athletics was unconventional. Initially enlisting in the United States Air Force and serving during the Korean War, he later attended the University of Oregon, where a chance observation of track athletes would pivot his path towards becoming an Olympic champion. Under the mentorship of coach Bill Bowerman, who later co-founded Nike, Davis developed a technique and speed that were unmatched at the time. In 1960, Davis set a world record of 44.9 seconds in the 400 meters becoming the first man to break the 45-second barrier, an achievement that propelled him into the global spotlight. Beyond his athletic achievements, Davis was a mentor and coach, influencing future generations. 
After retiring from competitive sports, he dedicated his life to education and community service. He worked extensively in the New Jersey public school system, inspiring students with his dedication to sports and education. Davis's post-athletic career included roles as a truancy officer and mentor, reflecting his commitment to positively impacting youth. Davis's life was a testament to resilience and determination. Despite facing racial challenges and starting his athletic career later than most, he reached pinnacles that many could only aspire to. His legacy extends beyond the medals and records, residing in the lives he touched through his community involvement and the inspiration he provided to athletes worldwide. Otis Davis passed away at the age of 92. His life's work leaves a legacy that transcends sports, emphasizing the power of perseverance, integrity, and the impact one individual can have on the lives of many. Tributes to Otis Davis. Number 3. Paul-André Cadieu, a pioneering figure in the world of professional ice hockey, has left an everlasting mark through his extensive career as a player, player coach, coach, and sports director. Born on June 25, 1947 in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, Cadieu's journey in hockey began after graduating from the University of Ottawa with a degree in sports science. In 1970, he ventured to Switzerland to join SC Bern initiating a lifelong dedication to Swiss ice hockey that would define his career. Cadieu's impact was immediate and lasting. As a player and player coach, he led SC Bern to three National League A championships in 1974, 1975, and 1977. His leadership on the ice was paralleled by his strategic acumen off it, guiding teams like HC Davos, EHC Schur, and Genève Servette HC through various roles that spanned coaching to sports direction. His tenure at Genève Servette was particularly notable, encompassing roles from player coach to sports director, underscoring his versatility and commitment to developing hockey talent. Beyond the rink, Cadieu's life was enriched by his family, notably his son Jan Cadieu, who followed in his footsteps to become a professional ice hockey player. This familial bond highlights a personal life deeply intertwined with hockey, a legacy carried forward by the next generation. Cadieu's influence extended through his later roles as a coach and sports director at clubs like EHC Basel, HC Martigny, and HC Lausanne. Each position held reflected his deep understanding of the game and his ability to adapt and thrive in various facets of hockey management. Paul-André Cadieu passed away at the age of 77. His death marks the end of an era for many in the hockey world who admired his dedication and innovation. Cadieu was more than just a participant in hockey. He was a steward of the sport, fostering growth and passion in countless players and fans. Tributes to Paul-André Cadieu. Number 2. Steve Gregg, born on November 3, 1955, in Wilmington, Delaware, left a profound legacy in the world of competitive swimming. His journey began at the Tattnall School in Newcastle County, Delaware, where he first took to the water at age 5 and quickly advanced in competitive swimming. Under the guidance of coach Bob Matson at the Wilmington Swim School, Gregg's talent swiftly unfolded. His early achievements included setting records and securing victories at the Delaware State Swimming Championships during his high school years. Greg's prowess led him to North Carolina State University, where he not only excelled in the pool but also became the first athlete at the university to earn All-American honors for four consecutive years, from 1974 to 1977. Greg's competitive spirit and dedication reached a pinnacle at the 1976 Montreal Olympics, where he won a silver medal in the 200-meter butterfly. His performance there was a highlight of his career, marked by a near-world record time that showcased his exceptional ability and determination. Post-competition, Greg's academic pursuits in zoology at North Carolina State, followed by advanced degrees in exercise science and exercise biochemistry from the University of Arizona and UC Berkeley, respectively, 
underscored his commitment to understanding the science behind athletic performance. His academic and professional life after swimming included a significant role at Quaker Oats in Brussels, where he marketed Gatorade, further merging his interests in sports and science. Beyond his professional achievements, Greg was a dedicated father and remained active in swimming through master's competitions. He also contributed to the sport through his work with the USA Swimming Foundation and the International Swimming Hall of Fame, helping to inspire the next generation of swimmers. Steve Gregg passed away at the age of 68. His contributions to swimming and his legacy as an Olympian will be remembered by many, especially those he inspired and mentored throughout his storied career. Tributes to Steve Gregg. What's trending on the internet? News 1. Fitness influencer Miguel Angel Aguilar, who has ties to celebrities like Kim Kardashian and Angelina Jolie, is fighting bravely in a Los Angeles hospital after being shot in the face during an alleged robbery attempt. The incident occurred outside Aguilar's home on Friday afternoon, when four armed men reportedly tried to steal his Rolex watch. Aguilar, who is the husband of celebrity hairstylist Priscilla Vallis, sustained serious injuries and remains in intensive care. A statement from his fitness center, Self-Made Family Training, confirmed the attack and expressed confidence in his strength and resilience to overcome this challenge. Fans and friends have flooded social media with messages of support. One heartfelt post read, You've been a fighter since day one and have overcome every obstacle. Don't quit fighting. Another supporter added, You have more love to give and more life to live. Prayers for your recovery. Aguilar, known for his motivational fitness content and business advice, has over 48,000 followers on Instagram. His wife Priscilla, who frequently shares glimpses of their life together, has also been receiving an outpouring of support. Aguilar continues his recovery surrounded by love and positivity. News 2 An 11-year-old boy tragically died after falling from the 4th Avenue 9th Street subway station in Brooklyn on Monday morning, police confirmed. The incident occurred shortly after 10 a.m., and the child, whose identity has not been released, was pronounced dead at the scene. The fall caused delays on the F and G subway lines, which were restored to normal service by 1 p.m. Interim NYC Transit President Demetrius Kreklow suggested that the incident may have been related to subway surfing. He emphasized the dangers of this risky behavior, saying, The subway is not a social media studio. It should not take more tragic terminations of young lives for parents and classmates to comprehend the devastating risks. Subway surfing incidents have increased this year, with more than 100 reported and at least two fatalities, according to NYPD data. In June, a 15-year-old boy was found dead on the roadbed of a Queens subway station, also believed to be related to subway surfing. Authorities continue to urge young people to understand the severe risks involved and avoid this dangerous activity. The MTA is working to educate the public and prevent further tragedies. News 3. A man tragically passed away after participating in the North Shore Inline Marathon in Duluth, Minnesota, just weeks after becoming a father. Organizers of the marathon expressed their deep sorrow over the loss of Mike Lufholm, who died suddenly during Saturday's event. In a heartfelt statement released on social media, organizers thanked those who assisted Lufholm, including fellow skaters, first responders, and medical professionals. They described Lufholm as someone who made such an impact on the rollerblading community. A GoFundMe page has been established to support his young family, including his three-week-old daughter. Organizer Michelle Connolly shared, skating was a passion that brought him so much happiness. Along with being an athlete, Mike was an avid photographer and nature lover. His zest for life came through his art. The campaign has already raised over $2,000. The North Shore Inline Marathon, now in its 28th year, is one of the most iconic inline skating events in the United States, covering a challenging 39-mile course. Loof Holmes' passing follows the recent death of 27-year-old Blake Joseph Gruel, who collapsed during the City of Lakes Half Marathon in Minneapolis due to cardiac issues. News 4 Royal Palm Beach is mourning the loss of its dedicated mayor, Fred Pinto, who passed away over the weekend. The village confirmed his death on Monday morning, with Executive Administrative Assistant Chris Wax stating, 
Mayor Pinto's unwavering commitment and service to our community will forever be remembered and cherished. Vice Mayor Jeff H. Mara will serve as acting mayor following Pinto's passing. Details about his cause of death have not been disclosed, but the community has been sending heartfelt condolences to his family and friends. Pinto, a Harlem native and Fordham University graduate, had a distinguished career before becoming mayor in 2016. He also served in the U.S. Army, retiring as a lieutenant colonel, and played an active role in local governance. Pinto chaired the Palm Beach Transportation Agency and was a member of the Palm Beach County Metropolitan Planning Organization and the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council. Recently re-elected in March, his term was set to expire in 2026. Village officials are currently assessing the next steps to fill the vacancy left by Pinto's passing. The entire Royal Palm Beach community feels the impact of his loss deeply. News 5. Model Bianca Balti has revealed her diagnosis of stage 3 C ovarian cancer in an emotional update shared on Instagram. The 40-year-old Sports Illustrated swimsuit star posted pictures and videos from the hospital, expressing the whirlwind of emotions she's felt since receiving the news. It's been a week full of fear, pain, and tears, but mostly love, hope, laughter, and strength, Balti wrote, radiating positivity amid her challenging journey. Despite the diagnosis, Bianca is determined to fight. I have a long journey ahead, but I know I will beat this, she assured her followers, dedicating her strength to herself, her loved ones, especially her daughters, and anyone who needs inspiration. She added, Life happens. Give it a reason. So far, cancer has given me a chance to find beauty through life's hurdles. Balti also shared that she underwent surgery and is preparing for chemotherapy. The model, who carries the BRCA1 gene, had already taken preventive measures in 2022 by undergoing a double mastectomy. She remains hopeful and resilient, facing her battle with grace and courage. Her story continues to inspire many around the world. Number 1. Norman Chui, a name synonymous with the golden era of Hong Kong martial arts cinema, left a remarkable imprint on the film industry. Celebrated for his dynamic roles and charismatic performances, Chui's journey through cinema was both illustrious and inspirational. Born on January 21, 1941, in Hong Kong, Chui entered the entertainment world in the 1970s, quickly becoming a beloved figure for his portrayals of martial arts heroes. Chui's early career was marked by his passionate depiction of gallant protagonists in numerous action-packed films that captivated audiences across Asia. His work not only entertained but also brought international attention to the unique art of Hong Kong cinema. By the 1980s, Chui had expanded his repertoire to include complex villain roles, showcasing his versatility and depth as an actor. Beyond his cinematic achievements, Chui was deeply committed to his personal life. He was married three times and was a devoted father to his children, bringing the same intensity and dedication to his family life as he did to his screen roles. His contributions to martial arts films left an everlasting mark on the genre, influencing generations of filmmakers and actors. Norman Chui's life journey came to a close in Beijing at the age of 73, following a battle with esophageal cancer. His passing was a profound loss to the cinematic world and all who knew him. Chui's legacy lives on through his iconic films and the lasting impact he made on both his audience and peers in the film industry. His wife, mourning the loss of her husband, tragically passed away from a heart attack just days after his death, a testament to their deep bond. The couple is survived by their children, who continue to honor their father's legacy in the arts. The impact of Norman Chui's work is still felt today, echoing through the halls of cinema history and continuing to inspire new talents. Tributes to Norman Chui Renowned for his nuanced performances and a staple of the performing arts, Jean-Michel Dupuis has left an everlasting mark on the world of entertainment.